before we get started today, and this is actually the end of the day, this is actually the end of the video. You're seeing this first though. I just want to share some common sense with you guys because this happened to me the other day and it happens to a lot of people. If you call somebody, not call them, if you send somebody a text message, let's say you send your Uncle John a text message and he responds with, who is this? And you say, hey, it's your nephew, Nathan. You know who it is. And they respond back saying, oh, sorry, I got a new phone and some of my contacts didn't come over to the new phone. They're lying. They deleted you out of their address book. That's happened to me a few times. I've seen other people do it and I've been around them and they've responded like that. And it never fails. If you send somebody a message and they don't know who you are and you have them in your address book, you've talked to them before, more than likely they've deleted you out of their address book. Happens all the time. It never fails. They always say, I got a new phone and the numbers didn't transfer over. I got a new phone the other day. Guess what? Every single number transferred over. Even numbers I had two phones ago that I deleted for the same reason. It's funny. People do that all the time. Oh, that's you? I, that number didn't transfer over. I don't know why, it just didn't. They're lying. They deleted you out of their book. All right, I thought I'd share it with you guys. Let's get started. Man, I always had stories about the city life and the crazy nights. I figure I should probably give it a try. Maybe check it out.
All right, we got five two by eights out of that one. That's uh, five times eight, that's 40 board feet. And I've got one more in the loading arms down there. I'll probably get one out of it. That's gonna be a resaw out of one of the slabs that was a little thick. I shouldn't have cut it as thick as I did, but I was hitting my pattern mode and therefore had to follow what the sawmill said to do. And sometimes when you do that, you get a thicker board at the very top or a slab rather, it's just part of it. Pattern mode is when your sawmill is set up to set, to saw a certain thickness. So when it comes down, it saws that same thickness, whatever you got it programmed at. I got this an inch and a half. So you do have a little bit of waste on your first cut. For you sawmill guys out there running wood misers, that makes probably more sense to you. And also the reason I didn't drag these back on the sawmill was because I'm dead stacking them down here on the other end of the building because these will be made into raised garden beds probably in the next week or two. There's no need to really sticker these up. It's not hot right now. The humidity is still pretty low in Tennessee and these will be just fine dead stat back here in the back corner. They get a little bit of airflow, but cedar's easy to dry. Piece of cake. Over here on the loading arms is the resaw piece I was telling you guys about. That's a little too thick right there. We can do better than that and get a board out of it. I'll try to get another two by eight. We'll probably have some live edge on it though, but that's okay. This is a garden bed or a raised bed rather. I never can say that right. We're not gonna be too picky about the boards for something like that. But there's still some good lumber in this slab right here. After we get this one done, I'll roll over these and start on them. Got a lot of cedar left to saw today, guys. Those are some nice ones right there. Something else here, guys. This diesel engine is in regent mode. I shut it down. Now you can shut these down while they regent. It's not gonna hurt them. But when I start it back, I need to get the temperature up and get this thing running hot so it burns off that exhaust and we can keep sawing through that whole process. And as far as the effects in this building go, it smells bad when it regents, especially if the wind pits up. But other than that, you really don't even know it's doing anything. And the wind's picking up right now. I guess nature heard me say that. But since we're in regent mode, I'll keep the throttle down the whole time with the blade spinning, keep the RPMs up. That way it stays nice and hot and gets that over a lot faster. You can do it when you're in idle, but it takes three or four times as long. So uh, before we get started back and get going on this cedar, Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7 on the sawmill. If you want those blades, friends, give him a phone call. His cell phone number is down in the video description. Thanks to everybody on Patreon for supporting me here in the channel. Really appreciate you guys. And a big thank you to Logrite for sponsoring this as well. And uh, I think that covers about everything.
All right, friends, got that log finished up. That went pretty good. Got about five boards out of it. And I need to edge two more to get my two by eights. I had one out of that log in the previous log. I forgot to edge. And what in the world is that? Over? Oh, that's more deer. I tell you what, guys, is there a lack of people hunting deer in this country? Because back here in this hay field behind the sawmill, every evening, and what is it right now? It's just three o'clock. I'll see sometimes 30 deer back here walking around. They're everywhere back here, guys. I know people around here hunt. Maybe it's not as popular as it used to be. I don't know. So where was I? Okay, so before we edge those boards, I need to clean up this mess. Check it out. The slabs are piling up. I need to haul these down to the burn pile. And hopefully, maybe Wednesday, I can burn that and get rid of it. It's getting out of hand. It's getting pretty tall down there. So let's go take care of that. And then we'll come up here and edge these boards. And after that... Who knows what we're getting into? It's getting close to dinner time though. I'm getting hungry. And my goodness, look at that. I know what you're thinking. Somebody needs a haircut. I'm getting one tomorrow morning, guys. Don't worry. Look at that gray right there. Man alive, I'm getting a lot of gray right there in my hair. Goodness sakes alive. I haven't noticed it here till today. Guess I'm getting old. 44, in case anybody's wondering. So people ask me when I do have the pallet forts on, why don't you have the grapple on? When I have the grapple on, they ask where the pallet forts are. Well, here's the reason. When you're picking up slabs like this, it's easier and you can get a lot more of them on the pallet forts than you can the grapple. That's just the truth right there. Look how many slabs are on the forts. If I had the grapple, I wouldn't be able to grab that many. Now, yes, there are larger grapples than what I have, and they may work a little bit better, but these pallet forts right here can grab a lot of slabs right there, guys. And the key is I'm staying in the cab. I'm not getting out of the tractor. Not that I'm lazy, but I'm trying to reduce my trips up back and forth to get the slabs. Before the comment section explodes, and I'm sure it will, Sawmill slabs, like I'm getting ready to dump right here, especially cedar, you can't do nothing with them. People won't come get them. It makes for lousy firewood, and you gotta get rid of them. And uh, let me stop for a second and explain something here. Here's what happens. Let's say I put an ad on Facebook and I say, hey, I got free sawmill slabs. I'll even load them for you. Come on and get them. I'll have about 10 people respond, and the response will be, is this available? It never fails, you get that response from about 10 people, probably 20 people. Out of those 20 people, five people will ask for your address, and they won't say whether they're coming or not, they'll just ask for your address, like you're just gonna give that out so they can show up at three o'clock in the morning. Out of those five people, you'll ask them to give you a time or an availability, and two of them will give you a time, and out of those two, one may show up, and if he does show up, or she, they'll probably be about two hours late, and they'll probably send you a message and say, I got a low tire on the trailer, I'll be there as soon as I can. It's the same excuse every time. I've always, th this country is plagued with people with trailers and low tires. But uh, that's why you get rid of these guys. If you don't do that, you end up like my friend Corey, he's a sawmill in South Carolina, he put up a picture today, he has a mountain of pine slabs. Can't get rid of them, people won't show up. And you can't sit here all day waiting for somebody to show up either. That's not very cost effective of your time. So that's why you gotta burn them guys. You gotta get rid of them because they, they stack up fast. And when your burn pile gets too big where you can handle it, then you got another problem to deal with. Low tire in the trailer. They say that all the time. That's always the worst. And the other one is, uh, is this available? Gosh, I hate getting those messages. I'll tell you what guys, I'm going to burn this this week. If the rain holds off till Friday, like they say, this is getting way too big. It's going in there off the fort. Sometimes they do hang up on the forts. Not too bad though.
was another good log right there. We got five two by eights out of that, which means we got, my math, 40 board feet on that log. That's pretty good. I think it's gonna take, who in the world's that? Those guineas over there hollering. Man, they're loud. What was I saying? Okay, so I think it's gonna take nine two by eight by tens to make these garden boxes. I'm gonna make them 32 inches tall. The taller I make them, the less I gotta bend over. That's obvious though, ain't it? You know what I'm talking about though. But I thought I was done for the day, but I forgot one more thing we gotta do, guys. Our mandatory evening tracker rideth Bruno. I think he's down here waiting on me.